Hi everyone, I'm Jamie and welcome to my garage. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really easy to make farmhouse looking box joint bench on Jamie Makes It. The timbers I used in this project measured 40 by 40 mil. The seven lengths came from a custom built pallet. Some of the lengths were severely twisted. I started off by removing the nails. This involved hammering the nails back out to expose the nail head and then using the claw hammer to pull the nails out. There were one or two nails which wouldn't hammer loose. To free these nails I clipped them short with a pair of pliers and tapped the leftover nail head through with a nail punch and hammer. I measured and cut the timber down to rough length using my mitre saw. I'll be trimming these down to final lengths later on. After cutting my pieces to rough length, I moved on to jointing. I started off by checking the fence on my thickness planer was at 90 degrees to the table. I could then get one face flat. I then turned that face 90 degrees against the fence and ran the piece through to get the adjacent face square to the first face. Some of these pieces needed several passes over the jointer because of how much out of square they really were. Because I've just squared these two faces, I like to make a reference mark um, for when I bring the other faces into thickness and parallel using the table saw and thickness planer just so I don't get confused. I've noticed on the planer blades I've got a slight nick um, which is creating this mark down here. Um, it's ever so slightly and I just can't get it perfectly flat with a planer blade but it is square to some extent. I'm not too concerned because I'll just run over with sander and I'll get that nice and smooth and I'll be able to put it up against uh, the other piece. I then sent each piece through the thicknesser taking off a bit at a time until all pieces measured 35mm. I think I passed each piece through at least four times until they were all at the same thickness. I then squared up the final face of each piece by sending them through the table saw. I finally decided to reattach my riving knife on my table saw because some of the offcuts were really thin and I've had a previous issue of kickback. After milling all four faces I could then trim the pieces down to final thickness. I trimmed the end off one of the pieces, measured the remaining length and made a mark at 415mm with a pencil. I lined up the mark I made with the blade of the mitre saw and set up a stop block using an offcut of 2x4 attached to the workbench with a clamp. Once dialed in I could cut the rest I needed. I followed these steps for the rest of the remaining pieces, moving the stop block to the new measurement as required. I checked the pieces every so often to make sure the measurement was correct. Beautiful! Time for a cup of tea! Next came the glue up and I gotta say this was the most challenging glue up for me to date. To get my head in the game I did a dry run of the first two layers. I had to be aware of the orientation of each piece so I had the face side facing correctly. I also needed to be aware of gluing the correct size leg piece. I got everything ready which I thought I would need and cracked on. I started by laying a fairly thick sized bead of glue and spreading it out evenly. I then placed each piece for that layer down, checking for square and securing with 50mm brad nails. There were a couple of pieces which were slightly bored so I clamped them down into place with my quick clamps before securing with brad nails. Once I finished the final layer I wiped off the excess with a damp rag. I think I fired about 100 nails into this bench and I only had one go astray. Not bad. I managed to pull this nail out by using some snips and without causing too much damage. I did have some gaps in places which I filled using the thin offcuts from the table saw earlier. I sanded the infill pieces into a wedge shape using my benchtop sander and put some glue at either side of the wedge. I inserted the piece, wiped away the excess glue with a rag and trimmed down using my flush cut saw. I also filled some gaps using the sawdust collected from my table saw mixed with wood glue and rubbed into the gaps. I then started sanding by using 40 grit with my random orbit sander. The 40 grit did pack a punch 
albeit a little bit slower than it would have with a belt sander, but I managed to sand the obvious high spots down. I filled the remaining gaps and brad nail holes with filler before moving on to more sanding. I worked my way up from 60 to 100 grit and even sanded outside when there was a gap in the British weather. I decided to call it a day at this point, the bench was sanded and it was looking good. The next day I started off by tackling the inconsistency of the leg height. I turned the bench upside down and measured up 450mm using my workbench as a reference point. I only needed to shave off a couple of mil to make it flush. I think the inconsistency here must have either come from my glow up or from the bench top being slightly out of measurement from milling. I was struggling to make a line across the point I had made so I lifted the bench onto its side giving me a relatively flat surface to rest on. I clamped a straight edge to the workpiece and trimmed off the edge with my circular saw. I then repeated this for the other side. I knocked the sharp corners off the base of one of the legs with my random orbit sander and realised that this was kind of overkill and it was kind of difficult to control so I changed to hand sanding with 100 grit instead this one much easier next I moved on to preparing the bench for paint I used masking tape and old newspaper to create a clean edge separating the parts I want painting from the parts I didn't if you're wondering what happened to your masking tape wifey <laughs> For the paint, I used this black, universal, all-surface paint from rust -Oleum in a satin finish. I really like using this paint. I use it on another bench and planters in my garden. It has a trigger mechanism as opposed to a conventional spray can button, making it easier to use. I applied two coats, allowing the paint to dry in between coats. The next day, I came back and started to remove the newspaper, revealing the nice, crisp lines of the paint. I had a couple of spots where the paint had seeped under the tape, but I could live with that. I wanted the finish to be a similar colour scheme of my planters, which are painted edges with an antique pine Danish oil. But as soon as I started to apply the Danish oil, I hated it. Not sure I'm a fan. Yeah, uh, ouch. I decided the best way to salvage the bends was to strip this back to the original wood. I got all my low grit sanding this out and I just went to town sanding away all the paint and all the Danish oil until I got back to the bare wood. After managing to remove the old finish, I then worked my way back up sanding to 100 grit. I then had to put my hand in my pocket and buy some new finish. So I bought this Georgian medium oak Danish oil from B&Q and as soon as I put the first coat on I was like, wow. Yes, this is the finish I'm wanting. I applied three coats of this, allowing time to dry in between coats and lightly sanding with 600 grit before applying the next coat. When the final coat of Danish oil had dried, I could call this project done. This project had its challenges and snags along the way, resulting in a few days setback, but I am proper happy with the end result. This was my first box joint project. I'm super surprised with just how strong this bench is and it's gonna go well in our garden once it stops raining thanks for watching everyone if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and i would greatly appreciate it if you tap that subscribe button see you in the next video thanks